a big deal. And good morning, everyone. Uh, thank the Lord for another morning. I thank him for waking us up and for the gift of a new day. Um, I, I know that the Lord has led through his Holy Spirit in the prayer meeting. And uh, indeed, we're living in serious times and time is truly running out on us. May the Lord hold back the winds of strife just a little longer to allow all of his servants to be sealed for eternity with him. May the Lord help us and have mercy. Thank you all. Um, let us pray to begin this, this segment. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of another day. For the gift, gifts of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we just want to recommit our lives to you. Lord, we ask that you will anoint us afresh with your Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God. My Father God, I, as we move into this session, Lord, I pray that whatever we discuss here will be in accordance with your word, will bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, I may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, I pray that you will remove every impurities from me, from us. Search us, Lord, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts and cleanse us from, from every atom of sin this morning. And let your spirit flow through us, Lord. Uh, that's um, heart will be blessed here, Lord, and, and uh, your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay, to sing, to continue, we will sing the hymn 310, hymn number 310, I would draw nearer to Jesus. Hymn number 310, it has three verses. I'm going to ask Tuckleys, as usual, to lead us out in the first verse. First. And I will take the second. And may I ask someone to take verse three, please? Thank you. Do we have someone for verse three, please? I would draw near to Jesus. Do you know it? No. <laughs> okay, it's like, I'm nearer to Jesus. I would draw nearer to him. We've, we've sung it here before. Okay, in that case, um, uh, uh, may I ask talk, please, if you could do verses one and two? Thank you. I'll do the middle verse. Thank you, Tuckleys, and over to you. I will draw nearer to Jesus in his sweet presence above, constantly trying to please him. Safe and secure at his side. I would draw nearer to Jesus. I would draw nearer to him. Fully surrender each moment. I would draw nearer to him. I will draw nearer to Jesus, nothing withholding from him. 
Knowing he loves to be gracious, I will draw nearer to him. I will draw nearer to Jesus. I will draw nearer to him. But I surrendered each moment. I would draw nearer to him. I would draw nearer to Jesus, seeking his strength to be true, willing to tell of his goodness, gladly his best will to do. Best will to do. I would draw nearer to Jesus, I would draw nearer to, nearer to Him, fully surrender each moment, I would draw nearer to Thank you for your beautiful singing. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Let us pray again. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for mercy and grace. We thank you for your words, bread of life. Father, as we open to partake of this bread of life, Lord, I pray that you will open our hearts and our minds so that we will understand it. And in Jesus' name, let your will be done. And may your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Um, I just want to apologize for my absence yesterday. I wasn't able to, uh, physically, I wasn't able to lead out. Um, I was preparing for a test yesterday and I I lacked sleep so I wasn't I wasn't able to come in. So I just wanna I thank the talkless for leading out. I did ask someone to do for me, I did ask, but um didn't get the message in time. So because of that. I have to open the door for me. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry, can you give me a minute, please? Sorry about that. Shall we sing another song while we're waiting for Sister Ruby? Um, four, five, six, my Lord and I will do the first verse. Anyone for the second verse? Hello? Okay, are you ready? Yeah, I'm so That's sorry. Fine, was, we're just going to do a song. Was, That's fine. Oh, yeah. I'm so really sorry. It was um, a, a little situation I had here. Um, sorry about that. My apologies. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we're back now. Um, yes, thank you, um, Tuckley's, for projecting the reading on this screen. Ah, gosh, sorry. Okay, so um, can I have a reader, please? Can I have a reader for this paragraph? Thank you. Oh, wait. Wow, Lucifer. 
while Lucifer counted it a thing to be grasped, to be equal with God, Christ, the exalted one, made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2, verse 7 and 8. Now the cross was just before him, and his own disciples were so filled with self-seeking, the very principle of Satan's kingdom, that they could not enter into sympathy with their Lord, or even understand him as he spoke of his humiliation for them. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Judith. Uh, yeah, we read this one yesterday. Uh, that's yeah, that's fine. Where, yeah, this is where, that's where we got to. Yeah. And and sometimes it's, yeah, it's, it's needed that we reread some of the, because this is a beautiful paragraph. It has a lot in there, I think. And I mean, even, even if it was read yesterday, um, I'd like to go through it. Um, this morning so yeah <laughs> okay so um so yeah here we see a, um a, a contrast between Christ and Satan massive contrast so while Christ the exalted one made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant, you know, the king of kings becoming a servant. And on the other hand, we see Satan um, trying to, to grasp, filled with selfish ambition and wanted to be like God. You know, you know he didn't want to be like God. He wanted to be above God or God himself. That was what Satan wanted. Um, so what, what a stark contrast between um, Christ and Satan. And as he was in heaven, you know, he came down on earth and the same spirit that he had that brought discord um, in heaven, he took it down here and he... It's always his objective to fill men with his spirit. You know, we you know how he went to um, Eve and he tried to tempt Eve with this selfish ambition. Um, he wanted Eve, he was tempting Eve with the idea of becoming like God, just like he wanted. And um, that was how, uh, when we look at Eve, Eve actually desired Yes, she was filled with the spirit of Satan at that moment when Satan went to her and she desired to be like God. That was why she did what the devil asked her to do because she desired to become like God. You know, Satan said to him, God knew, God knows that if you eat of this fruit, you will become like him, right? And so Eve desired the fruits because she wanted to become like God. And we see the same spirit here in the disciples. And of course, we have it amongst us. Any other thoughts on this paragraph, please? It has a lot in there, I think. Okay, talk, Liz. Thank you. Please? Yes, I've had trouble unmuting. Yes. <laughs> okay. yes, good morning. The first thing, uh, when Eve uh, sinned, she, she, did, she, she wanted to be like God, but she ended up being like Satan because the first thing she did was tempt her husband. Powerful. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing with selfish ambition. It's very ugly in reality. So, you know, so... Um, Instead of becoming, she didn't 
And just like Satan, she didn't want to be like God for, for any good reason. It's the power that they desire that you know that people desire in 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 this selfish ambition they if she wanted to be like god i mean she you know would be would 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 seek after the the character that christ christ possesses but you know it's just the power that god has that that selfish ambition um seeks after um uh, here, I think, um, I don't know, I think it probably is a paragraph. Yeah, this same paragraph where it says that um, Satan actually wanted, um, I think it says that he wanted, he didn't want Christ's character, but he wanted the power, Christ's power. Yeah, and, and that is basically what these selfish ambitions are. And then we, we see the ugly manifestation of selfish ambition. And as the top list mentioned, yes, we see where, she became immediately, she became a tempter and she went uh, to her husband and we know the end of that. So thank you for that thought. Um, anyone else, please? Yes, Mr. Ruby. Thank you, go ahead. Um, good morning. Um, <clears throat> Good morning, everyone on the platform. You know, this um I was listening to um one of these camp meetings which have been happening in America, and I'd never really thought about it. Um that the sin which Satan says you want to be like gods, it is the sin which lives with us. It is true that we want to be like gods. He did not, um, he was saying the truth and it, that, that case is upon us, that we want to be like God, especially when we control, especially when we, we make decisions which have got nothing to do with God and we, lie, we live our lives apart from God and we, we, uh, we, we judge others. That is the, or everything which we actually do we are actually wanting to be like gods. We are fulfilling that curse. That we, if when we when we we put ourselves in the position of God, that what's wrong with this child? Instead of praying for that child, I I want him to do this, 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 and this, and he doesn't. If we listen to ourselves, we want we are taking the position of God in our lives, and when we don't even believe God. We we want we are wanting to be like gods, so I was thinking, yes, we know a lot of things in our lives, you know. As long as we don't humble ourselves before God, then we are we want to be like we 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 are thinking we are gods ourselves, you know. And if you look in the world right now, um. It's all about, I want to do this. I want to, do, I want that selfish thing that, you know, control and I'm on my own. I can do whatever I want. It's wanting to be like God. The case which we received in the Garden of Eden is running through us. Unless we surrender and humble ourselves, surrender everything, moment by moment, having every thought to the captivity, uh, captivate, captivate, captivated to the obedience of, of God, then we are wanting to be like gods, if you think about it. And I said, wow, you know, we need to really pray that we, we run away from that curse to ask God to say, Lord, what is it I want to do? What you what, what is it what you want me to do? My, not my will, but your will. Because the, your will, you want to be like God. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kezia, for that um, reminder. Thank you for that thought. Um, yes, we have to be fully surrendered moment by moment. You know, we can't afford. We have to be so watchful of ourselves. Um, of, um, otherwise, we become tempted likewise to 
desire to be like God for the wrong reason, um, for, for selfishness, for power, for, you know, selfish. Uh, I don't think anything is wrong with ambition in and of itself, but the selfish ambition is what is the problem, the selfishness. Here we see the disciples, it says here that, um, it says, that they could not enter into sympathy with their Lord or even understand him as he spoke of his humiliation for them. Why? Why were they not able to do that? Because their thoughts, their hearts were filled. They were preoccupied with, with selfish ambition about who they were contending amongst each other about who should be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And here we see Christ was saying, Christ demonstrated how, what greatness means in his kingdom. It means serving each other. It means being a servant. But, but they didn't get it. Um, and um, yeah, let's, let's be careful of ourselves. Otherwise, we ourselves will, will, will do the same. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other thoughts on this paragraph? Yes, good morning, sis. I good think um, uh, it, it was such a powerful paragraph. Uh, it was good to, to recap on it. Um, uh, most of the thoughts that have been said, I just wanted to add and say, um, you know, when God created man in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when he says, let us make man, but this, he says, let us make man in our image. Uh, I'll just read it again and notice how God uh is selfless and the charge that Satan was uh, giving to God uh, is neither here nor there. It says there, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, when you see Satan now coming to tempt men, he says, um, uh, in verse uh, in, verse, in verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the days ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, this was the temptation that was presented to our our grandmother uh, Eve. I was just thinking, you know, Satan has always displayed his character, uh, just like what he says in that paragraph. And this is the same temptation that he's uh, offering to us, the same temptation he offered to Eve, he wants to offer to us. And this was his downfall as well. He wanted God's power. This is what he says in Isaiah, Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. He speaks of wanting to be, to exalt his throne above the stars of God. He, he, he uh, coveted uh, God's power, but he didn't convert his character. Because you see, he hates the law of God. Remember, the law of God is the transcript of his character. So Satan is the only one who comes to us 
and tempt us and tell these lies that we can have the power without the character. It is only Satan who inspires people to fight for power without character. You might say, how does, how does this manifest in our lives now? We see this quite a lot. Uh, I think somebody yesterday was speaking of people fighting for positions, uh, position. Uh, uh, we see this even in the church, in ministries, in the world. I mean, we can't even speak of the world because that's normal. Uh, trying to outdo each other, seeking for preeminence. This is the character of Satan. He, um, he wants people to, 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 to aspire for power without character. Now, there was nothing wrong to be like God because, in fact, we saw in Genesis 1 that God actually, when he made man, made him in his own likeness. So God is not jealous of um, us being like him. In fact, he wants us to be like him. He wants his, his likeness in us. I mean, it's not like somebody, God is not selfish to say, you know, um, you stay where you are, I'll stay where I am. In fact, we're given one of the promises that is given to the church of Laodicea. He says, if you overcome, I'll grant you a place to sit on my throne. Now, I thought that is a serious provocation. You know, the devil, the reason why he hates us so much he knows what God, how God has exalted us. I mean, this can be put into words because what Satan was fighting for, because he didn't want the character of God, he just wanted the power. But now the people are going to be redeemed, they have the character, so God can trust them to be on the, on his throne. See, God can't trust me to be on his seat when I don't have his character. So in a way, God is poking the face of Satan, saying, you wanted to be on this throne, I'm going to give these ones because they have my character. And this is the promise he's giving to the church of Laodicea. If you overcome, that means now, because his name shall be written on our foreheads. Revelation 22, 4. So we have his character. God is not jealous for us to sit on his throne because he knows that what we think is what he's thinking. So that's why Christ did not count it a thing. But if it's from the devil, you know, it's so hard, but I, I think we can begin to see why um you can't. The, the, the devil was never going to make it because you need the character first for God to trust you on his throne. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, um, Elder Design. Thank you so much for sharing that, those thoughts, important thoughts. Um, so please, please go ahead. Uh, yes, just following on from what Brother Desire uh, was talking about. Um, yes, he got, uh, God was happy to make us in his image. You know, he wasn't... Some some people, if you've got anything like them, they, they don't like it. You know, they want to be unique. But God was happy to make us in his image. So that's why it's so wrong to have tattoos, uh, piercings, um, makeup and, and jewellery because uh, you, you're taking away God's image that he made us in. Amen. Never uh, thought about it from that angle. <laughs> the, the bits that we add onto ourselves. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing. All right. Um, can we then move to the next paragraph if there's no more thoughts on this one? Okay. Thank you. Can we have a reader now, please? Thank you. Verily, very tenderly, yet with solemn emphasis, Jesus tried to correct the evil. He showed what is the principle that bears sway in the kingdom of heaven, 
and what true greatness consists, as estimated by the standards of the courts above. Those who were actuated by pride and love of distinction were thinking of themselves and of the rewards they were to have, rather than how they were to render back to God the gifts they had received. They would have no place in the kingdom of heaven, for they were, ide were identified with the ranks of Satan. Thank you. So we see Christ's approach. You know, he never, he never ran out of patience with his disciple, although there were so many reasons for him to to um, to get impatient. But we see here where he he tenderly <laughs> um, took the disciples and tried to correct their 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 evil thoughts, because it's described here as evil, and showed them what is the principle that bears sway in heaven. He says that those who were actuated by pride and love, love of distinction, are thinking of themselves, yes. So, yeah, this kind of um, ambition, you know, it's, it's, it's full of pride. <laughs> um, and, and like I said before, that being ambitious should be fine, but selfish ambition is, is the one that we should try to avoid, you know. Um, yes, because selfish ambition only seeks to exalt self. It seeks after power. It doesn't seek to um, after the, the characters of, of Christ doesn't seek to work for man and God and God. It it just seeks after self. You know. It says um that um those who were actuated by pride and love of distinction were thinking of themselves and the rewards, the rewards they were to have rather than how they were to render back to God the gifts that they received. So God give us gifts so that we can use our gifts to um, honor him. And um, But when pride gets in the way, it, we do the opposite. Um, Sister Charlene, can you please make your point? Thank you. Good morning, thank you. Um, I was just thinking, you know, that God sometimes in his, in his love and compassion gives us these difficulties to humble us, but not to humble us in a bad way, to bring us down, but to bring us up and for us to realize that we can do nothing of ourselves. Just think back of a time where, I'm thinking back of a time where I really had to struggle for months and months and it was difficult. And I got through it with Christ and, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, through these difficulties, show me the lessons that I need to learn. And there were so many beautiful lessons. And, and sometimes, you know, you know, I'm not saying I, I've never had that, but sometimes we get upset with God. I've had that too. And I go, God, why? You know, but then I realize and I turn around and I say, oh, okay, Lord, this is a reason why I'm going through this. And, and it humbles me because when I come out of it, I realize that I've done it with God. I've gotten victory over this and that with God. And I've learned all these beautiful lessons and humility. So the more difficulties we come through with God, and the less we get discouraged in those difficulties, we realize our desperate need for God. And then we just, at the end, we say, thank you, God. You've just helped me. You've humbled me. You've made me more dependent on you because I want to be dependent on God. I don't know the way forward. I have no wisdom of my own. But if I trust God through these dark, the dark moments and the difficulties, then my love and my dependence on him will be bigger and I will grow and I will stay humble. So I thank God for those, the difficult moments that he humbles me and he helps me to, to grow. Thank you, Sister Charlene. Yes, in, it is in the difficult moments, yes, that we grow and develop and mature in Christ. Um, and some songwriter said that the, these moments come to make us strong. You know, um, because in these moments, it is in these moments that we learn to lean on Christ. Yeah, you know, I'm just amazed at Christ's character. 
And that is why without his character, it's we just cannot enter into heaven. We 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 have to have his, we have to be Christ-like to be in the courts of heaven. We cannot dwell in the courts of holiness with unholy character traits. Otherwise, the safe spirit that caused um the enemy to be thrown out is going to um is going to um, well up in us again and, and cause discord. So we have to, it is so important that we we, we seek to um, these characters, traits of Christ. And we have to, um, we have to earnestly seek for them, you know, day by day. And they, to develop these character traits, these qualities, we have to go through trying times, through fires. And as what um, Sister um, Charlene just said, through difficult times. And this is where our characters, uh, qualities, character qualities will develop, you know. I mean, I have never seen an instance where Christ, where Jesus lost his temper on on his disciples. And I'm telling you, the, the disciples at times they behaved like, like children, you know, and I'm sure it's the same for us at times. They tried his patience in so many ways because the enemy was using them, you know. Um, Christ never lost his, his temper on them. You know, he tenderly, and patiently corrected their faults, you know, and um, and we are encouraged to be likewise. We let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ. Sister Metron, please make your point. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. I thank God that war started in heaven. And uh, that only has made Jesus to study and to know the, the tricks of the devil, how he can bring his mind, his, his um, weird mind to uh, people as he started it in heaven uh, to the holy beings, the holy angels, how he brought his um, uh ideas which were not right and obviously he was cast out of heaven with the third of uh, the angels that actually listened to him and we see that uh, that only uh, did put us at a very greater benefit to have Jesus on our side who knows the tricks of the devil and how he can deceive the mind of a person. And so when Jesus is looking at his disciples, he's talking about a very crucial um, moment that he's faced with now at the very 11th hour, when he is also wanting his disciples to be understanding his gospel at that particular time. But alas, the devil has entered into the minds of the disciples, he is putting his own agenda in the minds of the disciples at that particular time when their minds are supposed to be connecting with Jesus and his mission at that particular time. So the devil kind of is now won the minds of the, the disciples just as he did with these angels in heaven that listened with him who are now cast down together with him and we see also that he is he's covering a much ground to field in other candidates for his agenda in that moment he also brings mrs zebedee with his with her two boys and she comes as well <laughs> she tops it up that's the devil working he's covering much ground to bring all the candidates in we see that as well, that trend 
is happening now at the 11th hour that we are before probation time closes. Jesus was facing now to go to Jerusalem for his last times when he was going to be crucified and you know killed. The same applies now. We are also just before our probation time. You see it, you see how the devil is working, uh, fielding in so many candidates uh, in his, towards his own agenda to bring his own subjects that have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the salvation of men. As we can see in most of the church grounds, the families, the communities, the issues that are, are there right now, everywhere, they've got nothing to do with the salvation of men, but it's about to do with who has to win, who has to be there, who, has no, who should not be there. The devil puts all sorts of confusion. Racism is coming in, you know, all sorts of confusion. Uh, who, is, who, is, who is supposed to take this position in the church? People are fighting from the general conference to uh, to to the church level. They are fighting if other people are removed from being maybe a superintendent or a, or um, a head elder or whatever. They and they get so annoyed. Uh, things have to be discussed. This carpet, this this thing, this uniform. <laughs> the uniform, you know, what, what kind of uniform that women can wear in their, but all sorts of anything you can see, all sorts of anything that have got nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the salvation of men are being brought by the devil right now. This is what Jesus was facing at that particular time. But I thank God because that's why I said, I thank God because the war started in heaven, that God now knew all around who the devil is and how he can attack us. And so we have Jesus on our side. So that's the reason why, as my sister Ruby was saying, to say Jesus never lost temper to his disciples. No, he wouldn't because he already know the devil from, from way back in heaven. He already know how he can speak through the people that are meant to be close to Christ. He knows how he spoke to the angels that were meant to be close to God. He knew how that happened. So he would not get offended with the comments and the behaviors of Mrs. Zebed coming in. She, he could have said, woman, woman, stay at home with your husband. But she didn't, he didn't say that. No, because he knows how the devil you know, you know, can attack people and, and also make them slowly sliding away from God when they think they are still with God. So many come for conveniences. That's what Mrs. Zebed probably came because she wanted her children, one to the left side, one to the right side. How many of us come maybe to the Seventh-day Adventist? So many people have believed. If you go to the Seventh-day Adventist, you know, their burial is so good. You, you can be buried well. Yeah, they, they, they do the, their things well. Or some came because maybe they dress well. They've seen the Seventh-day Adventist. They dress well. They come for conveniences. The devil is putting everything in any, all sorts of everything to just confuse people. But at the 11th hour, may God help us to really listen to the true gospel, the true message that we are supposed to be grasping at this particular time when we are almost reaching right before the probation closes, which the disciples, the devil wanted them to miss the information that was very important, very crucial for them to know. We also are finding ourselves in the same position when we are being scattered by the devil to discuss all sorts of anything and rubbish and anything that has nothing to do with our salvation, yet probation is soon to close. Thank you. Thank you for um, that. those um, points, those powerful points, yes. The, the spirit of confusion and distraction is very prevalent in our churches today. Um, yes, and, and yeah, it's, it's an agency of Satan that is behind all of this. Just like what was happening, like you mentioned, at the 11th hour um, amongst the disciples. It's the same spirit that is working um, behind the church now in this 11th hour. You know, um, last week I was in church and... Um, and they spent over two hours, I'm not lying. It started at three o'clock and after five, I left 
and I left them in discussion, debating about, <laughs> when I remember what, what, what they were debating about, I will let you know, but to me, it was trivial. And I, and I was thinking that this is not um, salvational. This over two hours plus that um, was spent debating this issue, um, it, it was a waste of the Sabbath afternoon when it could have been spent um, delving into the word of God. Uh, it was so trivial, and we, yet we, it, um, we were so distracted in those, and I, I was a bit frustrated. And um, eventually, I just couldn't tolerate it anymore. Eventually, I just, I, I just had to leave. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, that's the spirit of distraction for you. Thank you. Um, Brother JB, please make your point. Morning. Um, indeed, when uh, the, 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 the whole redemption really is, is the restoration of the image of God and his likeness in man. Because when Adam and Eve were created, um, they were created to reflect his character. They were not created to be above God, but they were created to reflect his character. That's why when uh, Christ was on earth, he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So his behavior and his character was the same as his father. But uh, people didn't get it on earth. So because uh, then in Genesis 5, Adam and Eve lives 130 years and he begat a son in his own likeness after his own image. She called his name Seth. So after the fall, the image of God and his likeness was lost because they have sinned. They are no longer, uh, the, when people afterwards, uh, most of them, they were not reflecting the character of God anymore. So, as we live on earth and we're faced with sin every day, we have to strive to have the likeness of Christ. We need this likeness of Christ because this is like, this is his character and his righteousness. And this, this is the requirement for entry into heaven. This is the passport for entry into heaven. Unless we have the image and the likeness of Christ, um, we we cannot. We have no place in His kingdom, as it says. It is as it says there. We have to be like God, as He when He comes, He has to see like see. I mean, we have to see Him as He is. And in Revelation, only those will be able to stand are the ones who are going to enter. So we have to strive for what was lost when Adam and Eve sinned. Before they were fully reflecting the image and the character of God before they sinned. That's why, uh, I mean, they were able to, to tarry in the, in the Garden of Eden. But afterwards, when they sinned, they were no longer reflecting, I mean, the like God. That's why they couldn't dwell in the same place with God. That's why they were kicked out. So the, the, the plan of redemption is just the reversal of what was created from the beginning. And God says, we are either with him or against him. If we don't strive on earth for God's character to be fully reproduced in us when he comes we will not be able to reflect his character and we will not, we will not be counted worthy uh, to face him or to enter in the cause of heaven. This is what we should be striving for, not having these pointless debates about the, the I mean, people uh, squabble about the, I mean, the, the Godhead and everything like that, when the Bible is just revealed, whatever it reveals, and that is enough for me and you. But sometimes, as you say, that precious time is wasted on, on that we, 
by the end of whether it's five hours or it's two hours by the end of that time, we still don't have an answer because the Bible and the spiritual prophecy is silence on some matters. Instead of only bothering, worrying about what God has revealed to us for our salvation, and the key is for us to have his righteousness on earth. For us, his righteousness is holiness on earth. This is what is needed. Thank you. Thank you for that, Brother JB. Um, yes, the, um, as you said, that true education is to have an understanding that redemption, the essence of redemption is for God to restore in man his true character that was lost. You know, and it goes on to say that if we don't understand this, we, sh we will not have a place in, in God's kingdom. May the Lord help us to understand that and to seek after it. Thank you again. Anyone else? Any other thoughts on the chapter? We've got six minutes to go. Um, any other thoughts? Otherwise, we could move on to the next paragraph. Okay, so we've got another hand. That's Brother Tabuta. Could you make your point? Thank you. Well, thank you, Sister Ruby. Um, uh, back to the um, um, Brother Tabuta, you're very low. Your volume. Um, can you hear me okay. now? Yes, it's better. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I was just going to refer to back to the paragraph we just read, and I'll uh, just read this sentence uh, where it says, um, he showed what is the principle that bears sway in the kingdom of heaven in, and in what true greatness consists as estimated by the standards of the courts of above. The biggest problem which started in heaven was the, the system of, um, it was that of worship. Um, Lucifer could not bring himself to worship God. And uh, uh, it ultimately, this, uh, worship will also be the key, uh, again, uh, the establishment of the God's kingdom. And, uh, you know, uh, even then, the same paragraph says, those who were actuated by pride and love and distinction were thinking of themselves and, and of the reward they were, to, uh, they were to have rather than how they were to render back to God the gifts they have received. And you see, once you start thinking about uh, uh, being as wise as God, as our, our grandmother uh, way, uh, was a, a kind of uh, deceived, uh, you are the system of worship, uh, with the proper system of worship goes, uh, falls away, and you, you um you worship other gods. That's the reason why in the, com in the commandment uh, it says, Thou shalt not have any other gods than him. So that basic principle was very violated. And then and anyone who have those other thoughts of worshiping other gods has no place in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Elder, for those um, words. Thank you. All right. So we've got three minutes left. And any other thoughts on the paragraph? I'm not going to start a new paragraph because we've only got three minutes left. So um, if anyone else has anything to share on this paragraph, can raise your hand. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we could start another paragraph. <laughs> Before honor is humility. Is that the next paragraph? Yes. All right. Can can someone read this one, please? Because we actually. Yeah. Can we have a reader for this one? We don't have to discuss it, just read it and we might not have time to say anything on it. Thank you. Before honor is humility, to fill a high place before men, 
Eben chooses the worker who, like John the Baptist, takes a lowly place before God. The most childlike this disciple is the most efficient in labor for God. The heavenly intelligences can cooperate with him who is seeking not to exalt self, but to save souls. He who feels most deeply his need of divine aid will plead for it, and the Holy Spirit will give unto him glimpses of Jesus that will strengthen and uplift the soul. From communion with Christ, he will go forth to work for those who are perishing in their sins. He is anointed for his mission, and he succeeds where many of the land and intellectually wise would fail. Amen. What a powerful paragraph. Wow. It says before honor is humility. Wow. So so to be to be honored, you have to be humble. And we see Christ demonstrating that. And the opposite is, is also true. Before pride, before destruction is pride. And that is Satan's, that's his thing, you know, pride. And um, we see what happened to him because of his pride. He was thrown out of heaven. He says to fill a high place, to fill a high place, before men, heaven chooses the worker who, like John the Baptist, takes a lowly place. And the most childlike disciple is the most efficient in the labor of God. Yeah, and that was why Christ, um, when it was asked, who will be the greatest? He took the little child and... and um, to show them, to demonstrate to them what greatness in his kingdom means, you know. Um, any other thoughts on this, on this paragraph? It has a lot in there. Can we have another thought before we close out for the morning? We started a little late, so um, yeah, we could we could use another two minutes. Any thoughts on this paragraph, please, anyone? All right. So um, if there's no comment on this, we're going to close off for the morning, and then tomorrow we will continue with the paragraph. All right. So we'll just reread this paragraph in the morning, and so, and then go through it. All right, thank you all for your contribution, um, for your thoughts, for your reading. Thank you, Sister Sylvia sis, and um, Sister Judith and the Tuckley Twins for reading. And thank everyone who have kept us company. Um, may the Lord bless your day as we depart from each other here. Um, can I ask someone to close us out in prayer? Thank you. Let's pray. Dear loving and heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful for the privilege that we do get when we come to you in prayer and to commune with you and to spend time in your presence, learning from your inspired word. We thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of life this morning, for yet another opportunity to make straight our ways. Oh, Father, we ask and pray as we go on our daily duties that whatever we have read and learned this morning, Father, that it will be our meditation and that we will look to take an example from it and be the children that you want us to be. We ask that you guide us through this day, dear Lord. May your spirit guide and lead us in everything we're going to do, those on the highways and on the byways, Father. 
May you walk with each and every one. Bless us, dear Lord, as we go through the day. Father, may we continue to linger with you wherever we're going to be. We thank you, Father. We give you glory and honor and praise for all your goodness and for all your protection, dear Lord. For we ask and pray all these things in the precious name of thy son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sylvia, for that prayer. God bless you. And um, as we go through the day, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in God's sight. And um, I will now hand over to um, Brother Desire. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sister Ruby. Um, it was really a, a, a thought-provoking study. I, I think our prayer should be, God, help us to be doers of your word. Uh, I've been blessed with this study. Um, I'm looking forward to picking up from where we left by God's grace tomorrow morning. In the midday from 12 to 1, there will be midday prayers as always. And uh, in the evening, we have Aoud, uh, Aoud and Boucher. is uh, the one giving the word this week. Uh, if you have missed out, uh, please do try and join. We had some powerful uh, presentation from the word of God. So please share the link as well with... Uh, Brethren from your churches, your WhatsApp groups. And also on the 23rd to the 29th of uh, December, we have our winter retreat. Uh, let's pray more about it. Let's pray for the speakers. Uh, but the most important thing is that we should be there. And God bless you, brethren. I pray you have a wonderful day. Let's keep each other in prayer and let's pray for our country and uh, our leaders. You know, the, the the unrest that is in the country. Uh, it's just a call for God's people to pray. Amen. I pray you have a wonderful day, brethren. Amen. 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 Blessings on your day. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Bye. Have a nice day. You too. I am in the sunshine. <laughs>